Well, earlier this month, NOAA released its list of billion dollar disasters so far this year, and we've had nine climate and weather related disasters, including severe storms and ongoing drought. The annual average over the past five years is 17.8 events per year. And now NOAA is updating its billion dollar disaster mapping tool by providing you with hyper localized vulnerability maps. And here to tell us more about how this mapping tool works is NOAA Applied Climatologist Adam Smith, also joined by our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nabb. Adam, thanks so much for being with us. Can you tell our viewers at home how this tool works? Hi, yes. So we have worked with our partners at FEMA, at Census, at CDC, uh, and academic institutions to integrate 72,000 different census tracts across 100 different combinations of weather and climate extremes down to the local level. So it incorporates exposure, you know, buildings, population, agricultural value at risk, um, the vulnerability, the socioeconomic vulnerability uh, from different indices, and the historical annual average loss for these different extremes, all in one tight, clean mapping interface. So Adam, a couple of things that are big problems in our country right now that come to mind that this tool might be helpful for. One example is people who live in very flood prone areas, but socioeconomically, they can't afford flood insurance. And then what about people in storm surge evacuation zones uh, near the coastal areas, but maybe they don't have the means to have a car or transportation to evacuate. Are these the kinds of things that this data set can help people you know, take action to fix? Absolutely, yes. Um, in fact, New Orleans, the metro area is a great example because it's prone to many hazards, hurricanes, heavy extreme rainfall and flooding. And even though they've got a great barrier system around this, the city, there, of course, is a lot of socioeconomic variability. So you can zoom into different census tracts that average about 4,000 people per tract. And you could see for a, about a dozen different socioeconomic variables, such as no vehicle to evacuate, disabled population, percent of people below poverty, how each county and each census tract vary. So community managers, mayors, business owners, anyone who could make a proactive decision before, during, or after a disaster event can kind of get a better spatial understanding of where the need might be highest for different resources and, uh, and assistance. So Adam, if I am a future homeowner, um, this tool could be really helpful for looking at future neighborhoods, couldn't it? Yes, so um, there's a data opacity filter which you can actually zoom in and see your house. Um, Granted, this analysis is not down to parcel level. It's not specific to an individual or property. It's specific to counties and census tracts, but you do get a sense for how, where your home or business it re resides for different hazards, individual or multiple, multiple hazard combinations, how that compares to areas around you. Of course, topography, uh, you know, if you're close to the coast or a river basin or even into the wildland urban interface, those are all factors that play into how risky your exposure might be and how your vulnerability may be increased or decreased to different hazards. Adam, can this be used as a planning tool at all for city planners about where maybe are the smart places to build and where maybe are less ideal places to build? I think, about, I think in particular about this week when we showed a school in particular in Kentucky that was built right next to a creek in a low-lying area. Can a tool like this help in those circumstances? Yes, I think this is one of many tools across the federal government with FEMA, CDC, Census, even NASA, a lot of tools that provide different levels of information to help decision makers, planners understand the future risk based on the past risk. In fact, if you were to zoom in right now on our new tool and look at the river flood base risk um, in eastern Kentucky, of course, they're just recovering right now from that tragedy of a flood that happened. You can see how eastern Kentucky is at a higher risk than western Kentucky based on the historical nature of floods in the past. Hey Adam, just a few seconds left. Very quickly, are you doing outreach about this data set? I mean, if I was in your shoes, I'd have this data. I would hate for people not to actually use it to actually take action with. Yes, we're starting to do outreach. We've talked with the National Association of uh, Counties, uh, the real estate industry as well. But of course, the insurance industry, they have their own tools. So we're just starting to do more outreach. And this is a living product and will only get better as we move forward in time. Well, applied climatologist Adam Smith, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible new tool. Thank you.